Hey everyone, welcome back. We're going to begin discussing some more in-depth object-oriented programming principles. So this is kind of a follow-up to the previous breakthrough where we talked about the basics. Now we're going to focus on things including inheritance, polymorphism, and encapsulation. So if you're brand new, you'll probably want to start with the previous breakthrough. However, if you already have some object-oriented programming experience under your belt, then you might just be able to jump in with this one here. That being said, we are going to use some code that we developed in the previous breakthrough, and that code is right here. So this is up on GitHub if you want, or what I would recommend is just write it out yourself, get some experience, and we're going to work with this. So we're gonna clean it up just a little bit. We're not going to use this parse camera method any longer, so we're gonna get rid of that and get rid of this code down here as well. So now all we have is two classes, one for the position, and one for the camera, which uses the position class right here. So before we get started talking about our first section, inheritance, what I want you to do is take a moment to accept this challenge, which is to create these two classes, a class called security device, which is going to have an attribute active, which I imagine this will be a Boolean, so it's either true or false. And it's also going to have a method reset, which will set active to true. So I kind of imagine this as you have some kind of security device, maybe it's a camera, whatever it might be, you reset the thing, it gets a fresh start and starts up and it is active. The other class is a sensor and this is also going to have an active. The other things in here, one is being silent. So imagine a sensor, you walk next to it and it's like, oh, there's a bad guy and it starts beeping and making noise. Or it could just silently notify security. And then next on here is distance, which is basically the radius that you want the sensor to detect things in. So maybe it's 10 feet or 20 feet or 30 feet, whatever it might be. So hopefully the example of some security equipment makes this a little bit more concrete. You could consider this for actual security equipment where you contact different security equipment's APIs, or you could imagine it for a video game or whatever it might be. But either way, this is what we're gonna go with. So go ahead and try to create these classes using the skills we did in the previous breakthrough. So now I'm gonna show you the process to create these and hopefully you have something very similar to me. First thing we have class security device. And this is going to have the init method. This is where we're going to set the attribute active. So we'll say self and active. Inside of here, we will say self dot active and set it to the active that was passed in. I'm going to zoom in just for you guys a little bit. So that is how you create this first class, the security device. We're also need, going to need to create the method we talked about reset. So to do that, we say def reset, pass in self. And in here, we're just going to say self dot active and set it to true. So you could do more elaborate things here. You could do some logging, you could change the security device's position or whatever you need to do. But right now we're keeping it very thin, so all it's gonna do is set it to true. Next up, we will create the sensor class. So this is what it'll look like, class sensor. And in here, we're going to create the init method, pass in self, and the attributes for this is going to be active, silent, also a boolean there, and then, what was it, distance? My initial thought was instead of using the word distance to use range, but that already has a meaning inside of Python, so we definitely don't wanna do that. We're gonna keep it to distance. And then we'll just set those inside of the object. So we'll say self.active is active, self.silent is silent, and self.distance is distance. So pretty simple. Now the whole idea behind inheritance is that we can make a class automatically have certain members by inheriting them from another class. And usually these classes are gonna be related in some way. So in this situation, a sensor is also a security device. That's because security device is more general. Even a camera would be considered a security device. So eventually we're going to inherit from security device for the sensor and the camera. But first, let's just make sure everything is working. What we're gonna do is we're going to create a security device. So we'll say security device and set it to a new security device. 
and this is going to require us to pass in active, we'll just pass in true. And we currently don't override the string representation method for these classes. So if we were to print this object, we're not going to get anything too helpful. However, we can be sure that we're not getting any errors with names or whatever when we run this. So we run this and it seems that we're getting what we'd expect. So everything seems to be working. Let's also create a sensor. So we'll just say sensor and then create a new sensor passing in true. Now for silent, we're going to say false. We want to make a ton of noise. And then the distance will just go like 30 feet or yards or whatever default measurement you guys are using. So in ours, we'll just assume this means 30 feet and we'll just make sure we can print this. So we'll say print sensor and it looks like we got it. So here you can see that this is a security device object and this one is a sensor object. So these are distinct. A sensor is not a security device and a security device is not a sensor. We can make it so that a sensor is a security device using inheritance. So here's how you do inheritance in Python. In the class definition, after the name of the class, you put parentheses, and in here you, you say what class you wanna inherit from. So you would just pass in security device like so, the capital S, the capital D, exactly the same as this class up here. When you do that and you create a new sensor, you're automatically going to get this reset method. So to show you that, we can work with our sensor object and we can say sensor.reset. And just to confirm that this is actually doing something, let's just go in here and print resetting. So when we run this here, we can see that in the terminal we get resetting. Awesome. So let's just clear this out and move on to the next piece which is dealing with attributes. So the security device has this active attribute here, but so does the sensor. So wouldn't it be nice if we could just automatically have that active come from the security device? And we actually can do that. First thing I wanna do is I wanna go in this init method and just print init for security device. So that way we can just be sure anytime this method is being invoked. So we run it now and you can see we have this init for security device here. That means this self.active is automatically going to apply to that sensor. So if we go in here and we remove active, we can just get rid of it entirely here. Now all we have inside of the sensor is silent and distance. Well, we can still work with that active. So to show you guys that, we can actually go in here and we can print sensor dot active and running this we need to get rid of this argument here so we just pass in values for silent and distance now let's run this and you can see we get the value true so right now we have a very thin sensor class that automatically inherits the active attribute and the reset method now I want to talk just a little bit more about working with these classes inside of Python checking types a little bit more dynamically. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down just a little bit, and in here, we're going to check the type of a sensor. So you can say type and pass in a sensor object. Running this, the value you get is sensor. But it's also a security device. And to check this, you can say is instance, pass in your object, and then the type you're checking against. So you wanna see if this is a security device. You can pass, pass that in as a second argument, run it, and it says true. So this evaluates to true. It would equally be a sensor as well. So you can pass in the sensor type and it works just fine. This doesn't necessarily work the other way though. If you have a security device object, such as the one we created here, it is not considered a sensor because a sensor is more specific. Sensor inherits from security device, but not the other way around. Security device doesn't inherit from sensor. So if we went down here and we checked to see if security device was a sensor, we would get false. And that's exactly what shows up in the terminal here. Another useful method is is subclass. And this you're actually going to use the types. So you'll put in sensor and then you will put in security device. So this will check if sensor is a subclass of security device. Notice we're working with the classes and not an object. We're not using sensor with a lowercase s or security device with lowercases either. So running this, 
and we do get true. So that function might come in useful as well. So up next, we're gonna be talking about polymorphism. And what I want you to do before we move into that section is I want you to take our camera class to find here down at the bottom, and I want you to make it inherit from security device. So that means any cameras we create will automatically have an active attribute and a reset method. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna clean up some of our code up here. We're going to get rid of any print statements that we are using just for our sake and just keep it a little bit cleaner. We're not gonna be needing these here right now. So we're gonna get rid of those and just have our class definitions. And that is where we'll start with the next video with the only exception being a little bit of extra detail in this camera class. So I'll show you guys how to do that in the next video. But until then, try to figure it out on your own. Should be pretty simple since you pretty much just copy the way we inherited inside of the sensor. So yeah, stay tuned and I'll see you in the next part.